Francesco, welcome to Strasbourg again. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you came here last year with William Freaking, who was a guest of honor, and you were following him to, I don't know if it's right, if it's the right word. <laughs> you were with him to do... Uh, Stalking him. To, yeah, so <laughs> to do a documentary about not only his uh, work, but also himself. And this year you come back with the documentary. And uh, I need to ask you a question that I did not ask you last year. It's, of course, why William Friedkin? At, one, at what point uh, a young director decides to uh, uh, use this energy to uh, try to understand such a big icon? I mean, William Friedkin has always been, as a film fan, film, uh, I've been studying film before making documentaries, like, for me, one of the most uh, interesting, uh, I mean, I, I, I found he had a, a wonderful quality in his films, and I, and I was always trying to understand the, the elements that made all of his very different films unique and similar in a, in a, in a, in a masterful way, I would say. Then what happened is that for, for really uh, one of those moments of luck in life, uh, he asked me to, to work on his uh, documentary, The Devil and Father Amort. And uh, we had the chance to spend so much time together. When we were in LA editing the film, every day he was telling a new story. And uh, the new story was always more incredible and more interesting, if possible, than the previous one. So at some point I said, okay, I mean, I have to take the chance. I already had a big chance, you know, so now I have the second one. I asked, I offered him, and he was, uh, he, he said yes immediately. And that's how this whole process started. And, uh, and for me, it's been uh, really a gift, I have to say. Last, last night, I, I went to the, the wonderful screening of The Exorcist in the church, and uh, other than being probably the best screening that that film could ever have. Um, I, I, I had this great feeling that I, I understood the film better after all these months of work on the film, of, on, on my documentary, because it really opened up uh, William Friedkin, and that was the best, probably. Uh, before your film, you, know, you opened up in, in his uh, autobiography, yes. which is a wonderful book yes. also. Uh, uh, did you read this book first, and uh, did you tell to yourself, well, I have to do something completely different, I have to bring totally new information? I mean, his autobiography is uh, uh, probably with uh, uh, the Hitchcock Truffaut, the Kazan, and maybe Harpo Marx, mm -hmm. one of the best uh, book written by a great artist in film. Um, th the thing is that, I mean, I, I've read that before, but I didn't want to go through that, through his own path, you know. And uh, especially knowing him, you know that you can um, try to set up uh, a list of questions, a list of themes, whatever you want. But once you're in front of him, since he's one of the most direct, spontaneous men you ever met, in your life, the course of events of, of, the, of the answers will take, will take you somewhere. For example, I, I uh, talked about certain films in the documentary that are not necessarily films, I mean, the only films that I wanted to talk about. Those were the films that we ended up talking more, you know, that were more relevant to him. So in, in this respect, I, I try to, to have a, a dialogue with him, and from that on, I try to create and also to involve the other people in the film. It's it's really interesting because uh, William Friedkin doing this uh, is uh, all, in a way directing uh, your work on his career. Uh, he, he tells you what film you're allowed to talk about or not. Yes, no, I mean, um, and it's not really like that. I mean, he, uh, he, he lives in the present all the time. 
So I'm sure that probably, I mean, uh, for example, I, 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 I was able to find out that Sorcerer is not just my favorite film of <laughs> William Friedkin, but it's also William Friedkin's own favorite film. But uh, in those days, those were the films that really were more significant to him. And maybe if I had made the, 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 the interview a month later, it would have changed something, you know? But um, especially being uh, probably, to me, the, the, one of the best documentarians in film history that for some reason became uh, one of the best directors in film history, um, uh, the, the People versus Paul, Paul Crump is a movie that you need to talk, to, to, to talk about to understand everything that came after, for, until Killer Joe, yeah. until Father Amorth. So, uh, it was a, it was really a pretty natural selection. Uh, no, he didn't, he didn't interfere like in okay, the, in the show, in the selection. Okay, no. The, because there are all, all other, uh, I think, very important films, and that we know is not really comfortable or keen to talk about, like cruising or it's not maybe because he's disappointed by them and he doesn't want to talk too much about them. I mean. Um, there are, uh, I mean, not, not all of his films uh, were successful. Sorcerer, his favorite, wasn't, I mean, wasn't a, a commercial hit. And he came right after uh, French Connection and The Exorcist. Um, he did every single film because he believed in the story and in the possibilities that the stories, that those stories offered to him. So, um, for example, Cruising is a movie that, that that was really relevant in the historical moment the film was made. And it's a movie that he really wanted to talk about, not only because it's the best, one of the best films that, that is made, but because he was aware now no, of, the, of, the, of the weight, of the importance of the film. Uh, there's a really interesting idea in your film. Uh, it's that you don't skip the fact that Sorcerer was um, uh, an economic failure. That the movie, the movie was a flop back then. So it, it kind of brings the idea that failure is part of the career of every artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Coppola, who's in, uh, I mean, the interview with Coppola for me has been like uh, a four times at NYU. Uh, class, you know, something like uh, that would, I would treasure for my whole life. He said something like, um, making films without risk is like having a baby without sex. And I think this is Coppola, this is Friedkin, this could be also Scorsese in a way. So great directors, uh, I mean. That's the way they do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, failure is part of the, of the game, yeah. it's part of the path. You know? Exactly. S and you have, well, there are great interviews you know, in your film. Uh, of course, Francis Ford Coppola, but also, also Quentin Tarantino. Uh, many directors uh, were uh, okay to talk to you. Was it difficult to gather all those guys? No, I mean, it, it was only, the, the, the main difficulty was time, you know, because they were all busy and uh, doing something. Uh, I mean, they're, they're in, in, uh, in, a, in a very good moment of their career. Tarantino was casting for his new Manson film. Wes Anderson was about to release uh, The Isle of Dogs. And uh, so everybody was pretty busy. Chazelle was about to start the pre-production of First Men. And, but each one of them had uh, such a respect for, for William Friedkin and, uh, and, um, and a personal sympathy for him that they said, uh, please wait for me, <laughs> everybody. Or like, uh, okay, I'm here. So, I mean, they, they wanted to be part of it, uh, not only as, a, as an homage to him, but also like, uh, because they really liked the idea of talking about his films, how much they uh, influenced them. And uh, that was something that re they really wanted to do. Yeah. In, in that kind of film, most often, uh, people come to talk like an homage because there are younger directors talking about uh, really classic director, but here you have Francis Ford Coppola, who was his fellow director, who mm -hmm. was his colleague at the time. Yeah. Uh, 
in, in years the most in terrorist, in, interesting views on William Friedkin's work? I mean, uh, Coppola, I think he, uh, he really shared the same uh, adventurous attitude to art, no? Uh, that's made of, out of curiosity, passion, um, you know, uh, selection of, of uh, stories that uh, not necessarily are immediately popular. I mean, The Godfather, when it came out, uh, I mean, it was a movie made by, the, by the, uh, a young director from a story that wasn't like part of the, you know, collective uh, imagery, you know, like uh, then later became. So, uh, and he's a very, he's probably one of the most intelligent men and cultivated men I've ever met. So he, w he had, he, of course he had uh, great views, uh, great perspectives on, on Friedkin. And he knows him very well. Yeah, um, and as you say, they share the same uh, way of doing cinema with okay. a great amount of race. That's what Quentin Tarantino says. Every, uh, every director has to confront the idea that they will never be doing Apocalypse Now, Sorcerer or Aguirre. Yes, yes. And so as the third one is uh, Aguirre and Werner Herzog, did you also try to talk to, to Werner? No, I mean, I, I, mm, I tried in the past, but uh, Werner is, is, uh, is constantly on some volcano or like a forgotten cave uh, or somewhere else. I know he, at the time he was, um, he was, uh, he was uh, in Russia, filming his documentary about Gorbachev. Okay, yeah, oh yeah. And so, uh, it would have been great to talk to him, but, you know, next time. Next <laughs> it would have been guess, interesting yeah. doing something about him, because he has, I, I'm sure, like so many things to say. Exactly. Uh, frustrating questions. Are there people you try to chase and for a schedule problem do not appear in the movie? I mean, only one, only one. Mm. Uh, Linda Blair, because she she was uh, she was very nice. I mean, we have a, now a, a great uh, a text conversation, but she has a she has a um, uh, a rescue dogs foundation in in California, and she's been busy all year long with all the fires in California. She's been actively working, so she's a she's a great person. She really wanted to do that. But unfortunately, she was busy doing her, I mean, mission, you know. And another person that I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to meet was Gene Ackman. But Gene Ackman now, he, he decided to, to be separate from, from the film industry. He, he was supportive. Uh, he said, OK, use uh, French Connection, uh, do whatever. And he has uh, the greater respect uh, for, uh, for William Friedkin. But he, he said, no, I, I can, yeah. Y y you know, with the uh, favorite actor, uh, Bill Friedkin told me he uh, had the chance to work with something, someone who really uh, suit, suited his way of working. It's Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I know, he, he, was, he was on a set. Okay. He was in a set. They, 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 I, I think they share also something in terms of uh, attitude and... Uh, uh, but... Um, I mean, yeah, they, they, and they did uh, a couple of great, uh, exactly. uh, great films together. Um, but uh, yeah, those were, for some strange reason, two films we we didn't really talk much no, about. That's true. And that <laughs> helped with the fact that uh, he wasn't. But uh, uh, in the list that I made, in the in the you know dream dream like. Uh, uh, all-star list that I made, he wasn't there, not because I, I don't think he was interesting, but he was, I know he was busy, yeah. Um, uh, talking about your film's release, uh, is it going to be in theaters or...? Uh? I mean, in France, it was acquired by TCM. Okay. And I guess it's going to be uh, screened since the, um, the end of... Uh, of October, okay. so like 25th of October, something like that. In Italy, we're going to have a theatrical release uh, in uh, early November. And uh, I mean, the movie just premiered in Venice, so we're still uh, in the process. But we're going to have now, um, and really happy about that, 
uh, uh, North American premiere at the Chicago Film Festival. Uh, Fritkin is, of course, is from Chicago, and uh, they will give him uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award, and it will be a, a big celebration. And then, in, I think, guess uh, in November, we're going to have uh, also a theatrical release in the States. So, I mean, uh, one of the reason, probably the main reason I did this film, uh, I mean, as they say in America, it's a labor of love for someone that I really uh, admire as, a, as an artist and, and uh, I really love as a person. He is a, he's a wonderful man. And uh, I really hope this film could, you know, travel as much uh, as it can and, uh, and uh, be seen and people get to know uh, Friedkin or get to know better Friedkin. That's my, and uh, so that's my main. And first of all, it's gonna screen Strasbourg tomorrow again. Yes. Okay. Yes, that would be fun. Thanks for your answers. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.